Hey guys, how's it going? So let's look at what John Carmack had to say during Facebook Connect and why perhaps you should wait before you go out and rush to purchase the Oculus Quest 2. Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? And if you're here for the very first time to the channel, welcome to you. This is VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. And welcome back to our regular subscribers. Very nice to see you again today. So last week, a lot of things happened in the VR community with, of course, John Carmack's unscripted speech during the Facebook Connect. I thought it might be useful to put something for you guys so that we could summarize all the different points, especially as to what he was talking about with the Quest 2 development and why perhaps you should wait before you go out to rush to purchase the Quest 2 itself. The first thing is the field of view is actually changed and it's more narrow when compared to the Oculus Quest 1 and the Oculus Quest 2, which is 90 degree field of view. With the Quest 2, depending on your IPD and how you regulate the eye settings within the headset, you actually have a reduced uh, field of view and you'll see some black areas. Here's what John had to say. With Quest 2, it is a single LCD screen and the lenses move on top of it and they only move to three separate positions. We've got kind of a standard, a narrow, and a wide. And in wide, because it is just a single screen, when you move them all the way out, you do wind up sacrificing some field of view. So the field of view pulls in a little bit where you've just got black at the edges. So what's your okay. take on the, uh, about field of view? What do you think about that, the wider field of view? So there's, there's definitely a lot of trade-offs involved with this. And for most people, Quest 2 does lose a little bit of field of view, a little bit more eye standoff. And in the wider views, you, at, you have some trim where it's off the edge of the screen. So the fact that Facebook have changed the technology that they're using for the display is going to cause a number of issues, which I'll dive more into as the video goes along. So do keep watching. But first of all, there will be more latency in the Oculus Quest 2 when compared to the Quest 1. Here's what John had to say. There is a little bit more uh, latency on Quest 2 than there is on Quest 1 because we have to wait a little while for the, the, LC, the um, LCD to settle and before we flash the backlight. We're shipping it initially at 72. We'll sort this out and get Dart and Guardian to dynamically adjust to the, uh, the right frame rates for that. If you have a really cold headset, like if you were left it out in your car overnight in a cold climate and you bring it in, you put it on, even at the normal rates, it's going to wind up having some ghosting and having some problems. I was super excited about this idea of dynamically firing off the, the retraces instead of always waiting for exactly whether it's 60, 72, 90, 120, or whatever. Uh, the idea that on PCs, you have a lot of monitors that just let you run your frame when you want to. And that is great for smoothness instead of getting into any of these lurchy steps where you just barely miss your, the frame rate that you're targeting for. Uh, you just run it out when you want. And it is a almost pure win on a PC monitor. But the difference is that that's full persistence display where the backlight is essentially always going or maybe it's PWing at some incredibly high rate for dimming. But the difference is in virtual reality, we just have this one blast of the backlight and I had hoped that it would be okay of just like reading it, okay, we missed 72, it's actually only 70 frames per second. But our early experiments show that modifying this much dynamically leads to a visible flickering, but I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that this is the case yet. This is one of these things where we need to get back into our laboratories and put on some really high-end sensing equipment and run all of this because there's a lot of things that could be going wrong with this. <laughs> So it appears that the Oculus Quest 2 is going to go through a lot of different experimentation as people will be using it in order to get things right. First of all, John talks a lot about having so many different third parties within the headset so that every single component is basically break, broken down and before everything goes everywhere to your display, there's a lot going on in there which they don't really have control on. And also the new technologies make it so that basically things will heat up much faster even though it does have a fan inside of the headset itself. Um, the CPUs unfortunately, while if you look at benchmarks, we can run them at fully 
twice the speed that we're running them at right now uh, for the way we're shipping Quest 2. But unfortunately, that would mean that it takes four times the power. When you, when you get performance by cranking up the clock frequency, you wind up in this quadratic uh, power and thermal regime, which, which winds up being, really being painful. And this is only gonna be getting worse for us where uh, the power and thermal on mobile, I mean, we went through this really hard on Gear VR where we had all of these thermal problems and things were overheating and shutting down. And it was one of our, uh, you know, one of our big complaints, like a large fraction of users would wind up using it till it overheats. Uh, we got away from that on, uh, on Quest especially where we had active cooling. We had a fan going there that, um, you know, that could basically cool the entire thing running at pretty much peak clock rates. Uh, but with, uh, with Quest 2, we're at a point where we have a fan and it, uh, you know, it adds a lot to the cooling capability, but we are still not close to being able to run everything on the chip flat out. So we have to kind of carefully balance out the different things here. So if we take the Oculus Go as a good example as to what happened, for the first six to seven months or so, there's no issues whatsoever with the VR headset. But then what we found is that when you're using certain apps, for example, Old Space or Big Screen or, or more intensive kind of VR experiences, then the headset would actually overheat after about 45 to 50 minutes and it would just stop working altogether. There was one build where the fan was broken and it, it was on all the time. And I was like, I thought something was wrong with the audio circuit because it sounded like there was a whole lot of static coming through the audio system because it was just making this buzzing all the time. And there's the trade-off with fans where you can be small and fast or big and slow and heavy goes with the slow. It's kind of the, the helicopter versus jet engine uh, way of moving air. Uh, but there are limits to what we can do there. So it's very possible that we might start seeing the same kind of things happening with the Oculus Quest number two, where users after six, seven months may have some issues and things will overheat, especially if they're gonna be using Oculus Link, for example, uh, with Half-Life Alex or with Stormland or these, you know, Skyrim or all these big graphical intensive kind of games, or even the Oculus Quest itself, like for example, Satan Sinners can be quite graphically intensive, VR chat, big screen, all these kind of experiences which can add to the heat inside of the VR headset as well. <laughs> Light leaking is also an issue with the Oculus Quest 2 and Facebook have been very cheeky because they're forcing you, the consumer, to have to purchase a light leaking or anti-light leaking kit uh, on top of the actual price of the headset itself so that you don't have any light going inside of the headset whilst you're playing. Now, generally light leaking occurs when you have a strong light position near where you are, so perhaps behind you especially, or if you're positioned near a window and there's direct sunlight coming into wherever you might be located. It's also much more noticeable when you're playing games that are darker. For example, uh, The Walking Dead Ten Sinners, there's a lot of passages there uh, where it's very dark. Or also, for example, if you're playing with the Oculus Link, uh, you might be playing things like Half-Life Alex, um, which can get pretty dark as well. <laughs> Comfort is another reason why perhaps you may want to postpone your decision in wishing to purchase an Oculus Quest 2 because everyone has been saying that it's just not comfortable. And of course, again, Facebook are forcing you to have to purchase one of their accessories. So effectively, the price of the headset is not 299. It is 299 plus plus plus. So you have the VAT. And then you're going to have to purchase a head strap or something now. Just bear in mind that within the next few months, there are gonna be other manufacturers coming on board who are gonna offer other solutions to the head strap, also cases and all these kind of things, which actually will be cheaper um, than the Oculus, or sorry, the Facebook branded products. <laughs> Hi guys, sorry I forgot to switch on autofocus and all my footage is completely blurry which is why I wasn't on camera. And of course the last one is the fact that you need a Facebook login. What does it mean? I do go in depth into that so if you want to know a bit more go to the link description below and click on the video uh, where I speak about it but basically it means that all your data could be mined by Facebook and third parties including anything that is outside of your headset like your home or inside of your room as well as all the activities uh, that you do or that you take part in within VR, within the apps that are owned by Oculus probably, 
uh, or Facebook Horizon in the future and all these kind of things. And this data could be used potentially uh, to sway people's opinions across varieties of different topics and industry from government voting to advertisement for some products or what have you not. So because of course Facebook is a social network, so the privacy issue is a bit more sensitive or a lot more sensitive uh, and people have to be a lot more cautious than for example the data being taken purely for product development reasons to make the headset better.